Hi, this is Terry Peterson, the broker in charge for Teamwork Realty. We're coming to you with this video to discuss the valuation for your property at 3775 St. Ellen's in Darrell Creek. Now, you may be wondering why am I getting a video? Why am I not just being told, hey, your house is worth XYZ number? And basically, we'll be on the same page by the time we get to the end of this video, but allow me to explain. So, you own a home, you've seen the process of an appraisal, a residential appraisal, where you see a form that's got three columns on it, and the appraiser looks at a home on the left, on the right, and across the street and says, hey, this home is priced in between those three properties. It must be an accurately priced home, so, mortgage company, you can go ahead with the loan. However, that is absolutely not how buyers shop for homes. And so we don't feel like that process is good for helping sellers value their home when they're getting ready to put it on the market. Unfortunately, both residential appraisers are trained that way as well as residential agents are mostly trained that way. However, my background is in commercial appraisal where we have to take basically all data points Consider it into consideration when looking into evaluation. We cannot just limit it because that can heavily skew the data. Obviously, if we just pick three homes here, or if we just pick three homes here, those are gonna lean the numbers heavily one way or the other. However, a shopper looking in neighborhoods for a home, they're not just gonna look at one house and say, hey, this house is priced between that house and that house, it's neighbors then we should buy it. No, they're gonna shop everything in the neighborhood. They're gonna look at what else is selling in the neighborhood. So they're gonna look at this kind of data, not a tiny little subset. So again, we feel like this process more mimics how a shopper is gonna look at homes and how they're gonna look at the price of your home in comparison. So what we see on the screen here, they're comparable sold properties within your neighborhood of Darrell Creek. The blue dots are properties that have sold, while the green dot is a property that is currently listed on the market, and the yellow or orange dot, I should say, is a property that is under contract, so we don't know the final sales price on that property yet. Now, what we do with this data is we drop it into this analysis spreadsheet here. So we got price on the column over here, and we got size of the home on the horizontal down here, and we draw this chart here of the properties we had on that other map. So the orange dot you see on the screen here, those were the asking prices for those properties. The green dot that aligns with an orange dot is when that property sold, what it sold for. Sometimes they're a little bit far away from each other, such as this orange dot down here is gonna line up with that guy up there. So it actually jumped up in price by the time it sold. Most of the time they drop down, but in this market, things are kind of uh, not the norm in this market. So some houses are selling for more than asking price. Actually, that's happening a good bit right now, but it's still important that we price your house within reason. So again, you're not sitting on the house forever if you're wanting to sell it, but we're also not leaving money on the table by pricing you too low. So again, we take this information and we draw a trend line here. This is the trend line basically for Daryl Creek as a whole. I could expand this chart out here to 500 to 5,000 square foot homes and we'd see it matches up with those larger homes. So just to get down to some of the specifics though, we have your home at 3775 St. Ellen's as 3,197 square feet. And do excuse me if any data about your home here is incorrect. We were basically going off of county information, county records, which do tend to be incorrect. So if you do see any inaccuracies, any inaccuracy, excuse me, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll make a correction here and make sure this is represented accurately for you. So then we have it was built in 2006 that you are on 0.74 acres four bedrooms and three and a half baths in the neighborhood of Darrell Creek. Now, typically we have notes in here because oftentimes we do these after we've seen a home or basically there's more information in MLS, such as photographs and other features of the home. However, we don't have any of that information on your home. So right now we're leaving that blank. That's gonna be more or less by the time we get a chance to see your home, see what you've done to it, see what you've upgraded or see what maintenance needs to be done. That'll help us evaluate that. In the notes section there, basically the amenities, the additions, the things that might need to be tweaked or you know cleaned up some, that is what helps push this up or down say you added a heated salt water you know covered pool to the backyard that's obviously going to push you up here say there's a big gaping hole in the roof that's going to drop you down here some common sense stuff but nonetheless that's part of the process now for the comparable data we had a total of 20 comparable sales we have one like we mentioned as far sale two under contract and 17 that are sold the range of properties we found within the neighborhood were from 2100 to 5200 square feet year built from 2000 to 2020 and acreage from one half to 0.82. That means all this information well brackets your home. And that's really what you wanna do when you're valuing a home is look at what's smaller, look at what's larger, look at what's newer, look at what's older. Basically it gets ways to bracket in, book in all ends of the information. And now we take this analysis and we drop it down here to this part. 
So for one, I do want to talk briefly about seasonality adjustment. So many people have the accurate assum assumption that homes sell better in the summertime and they sell worse in the wintertime. That's the seasonality. However, we throw this in there to highlight that seasonality does exist, but with a huge asterisk, it's such a small thing that it never really matters. So just for example, right now is a prime time to list a home because basically June is June and July is basically the highest average price point of a home of home selling basically nationwide and then december and new year's that is the lowest price point but so again right now you are at the peak time if we were to list right now in july we would likely get you out of that home by around june time frame maybe july so this is saying that there's an upwards 3600 dollars adjustment to the price of your home because we're selling at the absolute peak time frame what that's also telling you is that say you weren't ready to sell yet and you had to wait till say october to sell there was, that would lead you with basically closing on the home around December, January, the worst time frame. But what this is saying is that you'd lose a grand total of $3,600. That's obviously kind of a drop in the bucket when it comes to a seven to $800,000 home. So again, there is a seasonality, but it's minute and it's usually never worth planning around that. So just to let you know that. On to the next one here, asking price prior to selling. So on average, homes within your neighborhood had dropped about $10,000 from the original asking price to the final price. Basically, they dropped $10,000 before they actually got to a sell. So to word that another way, if a home was originally listed for $800,000, they set on the market for a while, on average up to a month, and then they dropped the price by about $10,000 to about $790,000 until they actually got an offer in hand. So basically it's an idea of how strong the market is, which is actually a very good thing. That's a small percentage of the overall asking price range that you're in of again, you know, the mid 700,000. So again, it is a small thing because we're in a strong seller's market. And again, we touched on that days on market on how long on average these homes have stayed on the market is right at about a month. That's on par with uh, basically everything in Charleston right now in this upper end price range. If we were dealing with a, say a $400,000 home, your average days on market is gonna be closer to 10 to 15 days. If you feel like this looks long, it's only because of the price point we're in at the seven, $800,000 price point. Those do are gonna stay on the market a little bit longer because there's somewhat less buyers in that price range than the lower price ranges. And the final thing here is that homes are selling for 97.6% of asking price. Uh, you know, it sounds like it's pretty daggum close to 100%, but nonetheless, that's worth knowing because there's three very important numbers to keep in mind whenever we discuss selling your home. There's gonna be the asking price, and then there's gonna be the final sold price, and then there's gonna be the final net price, basically, or excuse me, net value, what you're gonna walk away with, money you're gonna pocket from selling your home. And those are three very distinctly, number, distinctly different numbers. And so it's important to keep that in mind that no matter what number we list at, just know that on average homes in the neighborhood had to drop $10,000 and that even once they've dropped and then they got to a sell, from that point, they had to drop about another two and a half percent. So it's still a good few thousand dollars. So it's important to keep these numbers in mind. But to basically bundle all this together, we'll get down to the, the important part is, all right, what number are we talking about? So what we have here, you may not even be able to see this on the screen because I've got it kind of faded out. We have unadjusted prices here, kind of faded out and adjusted prices. The reason we have that is there's a lot of small adjustments that go into the back end of this information. Again, it's more of the commercial appraisal process we use that makes these small adjustments that residential appraisers and residential agents don't usually throw into effect. I'll go in one example, but then I'll, I'll spare the rest of the minutia. Say this example home right here, say it sold six months ago. Well, guess what? A home that sold six months ago by this point in time has appreciated a good three, four or 5%. So what data we see here, if that was a sell from six months ago, we're going to increase that by a percentage to make it equal to what it'd be worth today because that's the seasoning of the sale. So the oldest sales are going to season or appreciate the most where if just for example, this house sold last week, well, we don't need to appreciate that any. That's already going to be at current numbers because the market right now is going on a steady clip up. So we have some some adjustments we put into the back end to make sure that they are hitting today's market numbers, not last month, not two months ago, not three, four, five months ago, because the market is changing on a quite ready basis. So again, that's the unadjusted numbers, but bringing it to current numbers, with all the data we have, we would suggest a range, an asking price range of around 772 to 788 is what the numbers tell us. And that would lead to an expected market value, which means an expected closing sales price of around 768 to 776. So those are very specific numbers. You know, don't read much into the speci specificity <laughs> of those numbers, but just that's the ballpark ranges. You know, this is what the data tells us. This isn't my personal opinion. This is what the data has come down to. So we would look at this and all right, in this range, I would say if you want to shoot high, 
well then let's shoot for 789.9. If you don't want to shoot for as high, maybe 779. That gives us kind of the upper end range of where we would be. And then again, because on average, this percent of, of asking price is what's going to actually close for it. That's what gives us a slower number. If we were to list for the upper range, say 789.9, we would sp still expect to get you closed for around 775 ballpark number. Now, the one last thing that I'm not going to be able to do on this video, but we do like to do for our clients is to provide a net, a preliminary net sheet. Preliminary net sheet takes into effect what your payoff is and a number of other circumstances to put in to give you, all right, if we sold you for this price here, what would your actual check be at closing? What would your net takeaway be after all closing costs are associated with it? But to do that, we would need an accurate payoff for your home, or at least a close guesstimate of what that payoff would be. Sometimes I can find that in county records. Unfortunately for your home, I was not able to find that. So if you were willing to share what your payoff is on your mortgage statement for your home, let us know if you've done anything like put it into forbearance or anything like that. Just need to know if there's anything major going on with your mortgage. But basically, if you've been making your payments and it's current, whatever your last uh, principal balance is on your mortgage statement is good enough, then and we'll do another video, it'll be shorter than this one, that will give you the net takeaway from selling your home within this price range. So would love to have the opportunity to work with you and please do not hesitate to reach back out with any questions you may have. Thank you.